Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome back again to Sequel Month. <laughs> or in this case, Squeakquel Month? No! That is not the case! I will not give in to your rodent based puns, you unfunny bucket of toilet leavings! The Chipmunks are an interesting franchise, to say the least. That is to say, they've been around for years and nobody's really thought that much about them until their movies. The Chipmunk movies always pulled in a big amount every December when they were released. I guess people just saw them as an extra Christmas present. In the same way your cat giving you a dead mouse is technically an extra Christmas present. Though in this case I'd accept it. People started to get pissed because these movies would keep popping up, obviously having little to no effort thrown in, and yet still make enough money that their shit obnoxious faces would show up all over the place. Well, you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of entertainment clearly not trying and somehow getting tons of rewards for it. So you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna figure out the magic formula in today's movie and see how to get the same results. Because if they don't have to try, I shouldn't have to try. Something of value is finally gonna come out of these damn movies. I will be rewarded for my suffering. My soul is prepared, how's yours? Let's take a look. Okay, so it opens up with the chipmunks at a concert called Save the Music. Trust me, if you want to save the music, the chipmunks are not the band you want playing there. Even dogs seem to hate them. We don't see their caretaker, Dave, played again by Jason Lee, reprising his role as a pair of shredded vocal cords with a human being attached. You gotta share the spotlight. Ah! It's not all about you. <laughs> yeah, where would Alvin ever get that idea in a band called Alvin and the Chipmunks? You know, for the longest time, I didn't even know they were called Simon and Theodore. I thought they were called Antha and Chipmunks. But please, continue to keep him modest. I can't hear you of the thousands of fans screaming my name. This does make me realize, though, bringing back characters from a previous installment often equals success. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring back characters from a previous review. Bring in the all girls! Aww! Come on in, ladies. If your awkward remembrance can help my fortune, all the better. <laughs> you got it, critic. Setting adorable letters to irritating. Let's do this. So Dave is taken down by a clumsy cardboard cutout, sounds like a metaphor for Lee's career to me, and he's left out of most of the movie. Okay, off you go! Wait, that's it? Yeah, apparently it's better to remind people you exist and then totally terminate you from the project. But we barely did anything! And that's what's gonna make us tons of money. Now off you go! Off you go! Out, out, out! Get out! Out, out! To the couch of underused cameos! Hey. Weren't you in the Spy Kids 3D review? Doesn't count. I hear that. Dave tells them that they're gonna stay with their Aunt Jackie. It's just me and my ganja. <laughs> no, not that one. Though would explain why she's seeing chipmunks. No, this character is similar to Miss Miller from the cartoon, though it's not Miss Miller from the cartoon, because that means someone who made this movie would have had to actually watch the cartoon. Let's have a hug first. Oh, get over here, you old teddy bear! I'm not really much of a hugger. It's okay, that wasn't really much of a joke. But okay, I'm catching on, and Jackie is going to be the new caretaker, and there's of course going to be some comedic adjustments. Alright then, I introduce you to Granny Tammy! Say hi, Tammy! Hi, Sonny! What's cooking? <laughs> oh, Granny Tammy, I can tell we're going to have a lot of quirky adventures together. On to the next scene. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is what the people want to see, apparently! Man, in literally five minutes, two of the caretakers who should have been major roles have been taken out! Oh, this way everyone will be dead at the 25 minute mark! Two dead 25 to go! <laughs> Instead, we get our son Toby, played by Zachary Levy, who you may remember as Chuck or Flynn from Tangled, and here where he plays his biggest role as the poor man's Jimmy Fallon. I'm not gonna be like, I know everything, and you do this, and you do that. Like my dad. Okay, now I think I'm catching on. Bring in the Daw Girls! Daw! Wait a minute, those are like the exact same characters. What? No, 
No, they're not. Yes, they are. They look like us, sound like us. They even have the exact same characteristics. Yeah, you can't even tell us apart. No, no, it's totally different. See, they have shirts of countries with no names on them. You know those obscure shirts you saw all over the place. Look, mine's US. <laughs> mine's Canada. And mine's so obscure, it doesn't even have a country. It's an ironic statement. Of what? That we like irony? I'm so glad you see the brand new comedic possibilities of this. Now you three, into the studio. Wait, what? Yeah, you're still barely in this. But we have to go like just, barely, we're barely Into the studio! <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> it's so hard to make a family franchise. So they partake in all sorts of comedic gold. Like singing Staying Alive, except making it about cheese balls. Oh, you can tell! Man, no time to talk. Because somebody finally saw the comedic possibilities in that! And of course, the essential slow-mo kicking pan to open cheese balls while holding high note for a song about cheese balls. Oh, yeah, now that joke suddenly makes sense. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I expected more out of the director of Private Parts in the Brady Bunch movie, but I also suspected less out of the same director of Dr. Doolittle and John Tucker Must Die, so I guess it evens out. But fear not, literally 42 seconds later, they sing another pointless rendition of a musical hit. Mm-hmm, yeah. Why don't you just sing what it really is, guys? You're a flimsy pretext for another rendition of a classic song gone wrong. Do you know what Dave would say if he were here right now? Oh! I think realistically he's probably shouting PAYCHECK! Speaking of which, how you doing over there, all girls? That's a spirit. It also looks like Toby has a cat that he talked about earlier. And look, a few scenes later, there he is! Okay, a cuddly pet side character, always a big money maker. I give you Mr. Yama the Llama! Aww. Let the hijinks ensue! I treated you good. I don't follow it, I'm just doing what they're doing! But the film tries to punish you further by taking the one funny element from the last film, David Cross, and suck out anything that made him enjoyable. I lost everything, and it's all because of them. I will get you, chipmunks. Now again, I'm pretty sure that's an exact quote from him from Chipwrecked. But he's not the only one who gets chipped off in this movie. The Chipettes enter the film in their birthday suits. How do these flicks not have sensor bars? Don't you know the 90s gave cartoon animals private parts? But what sucks most is they got some really funny voice talent behind them. Amy Poehler, Anna Ferris, and Christina Applegate. These are all very funny people who are given very unfunny things to do. I am Brittany, and this is my sister Eleanor. And I'm their sister Jeanette. Although I feel more like an Olivia, or sometimes Anyway, we are the Chipettes. <laughs> I haven't seen such a wasted Anna Ferris performance since... Okay, a lot, but that Keanu cameo was pretty funny. What makes it even stranger is that they have almost the exact same voice as the chipmunks. They're, I dare even say, the exact same character. Just give him the Tumblr treatment. Mr. Hawk? That voice, I can't get it out of my head. This trope, of course, goes back a long ways of incorporating a gender swap of a famous character, or characters. And apparently, it still equals gold. Well, they're not the only ones who can exploit that Chester! Duh! Are you aware that there's three strange ladies with confusing shirts in there? Never mind all that. We are going to explore Doe's backstory. Ooh, that's exciting! <laughs> Finally, the bum mythos will be revealed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me just see what they do within the movie. Tell me a little something about yourselves. We grew up in a small town, population 300. Fascinating. Great. It's impressed me. Yeah, okay. I guess we don't need to know your backstory. Oh. Come on, it's like how Baze and the blind guy know each other in Rogue One. They work together. That means we immediately know everything about them. I think that's more how they met each other rather than how they knew each other. Exact same thing. All we need now are some dance numbers. Go! Oh, uh, um... Yeah, on second thought, the movie seems tired with that too. Now it's about Alvin and the chipmunks trying to blend into high school. So, um, go to school, I guess, while performing some musical sequences. I guess going to dance school could kill two birds with one stone. But be prepared to change your motivations on a whim. That's what makes the big bucks. Isn't that more how it makes the little rodents? That's good. Keep making bad jokes like that. That apparently makes a lot of money too. Oh, okay. We got a lot more of those. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
So, just as Cross is amazed that two trios of talking chipmunks came to him to start a music career and both of them seem to look and act identical to each other. I mean like, STARS FUCKING ALIGN, THAT'S PRETTY AMAZING. It's abandoned to see how Alvin and the gang are getting along in high school. Look what I can do. Oh, you are the adorable. <laughs> Oh, that's right, I forgot this movie comes with a note. Every time certain lines from this film are uttered, an award-winning playwright shoots himself. You might want to see how Lin-Manuel Miranda is doing. But one of the jocks is jealous of their popularity. Girls, please, private conference. We will, of course, obey because, I don't know, chicks? <laughs> they, of course, don't get along, forcing the chipmunks to fight back. Little fatty. <laughs> Jiggles when I poke him. Okay. Apart from driving this movie's kill count to rival that of 2016, take a look at how they animate his face. Jiggles when I poke him. Good God! It looks like the poster to their next film, Chip Ceased. This gets him a trip to the principal's office. I should suspend all three of you. Please do. Okay, how unfocused does a film have to be when looking at a bobblehead made it into your script? She says I should suspend you. He says please do. Ah oh, crap, I just wrote that into the script. Ah, oh, what do I care? It's Alvin and the Chipmunks. But of course violence towards others is fine as long as the principal is a fan of your work. I just cannot believe that you're actually sitting in my office. I have all of your CDs. Promise me that you won't say anything. If the faculty ever found out about this, I could... The higher-ups don't take well to furry pedophiles. What? I mean, just a fan, just a fan. So she tells them there's a music competition where the winner gets $25,000 that they can use to save their music program. Because I guess this is the plot now. Oh, never mind. We're back to the blending in plot again. You're next, furball. You talking to me? You talking to me? I'm the only one here, so you must be talking to me. Really? We left a pause for that joke. Oh, booyah! Dude's got hands. We can definitely use them on the team. Okay, I guess this is the plot now. It looks like Alvin is trying to be a sports star when- I wanna know what love is. Okay, I guess we're back to this plot again. So the chip bats are gonna compete against the chipmunks. Oh, Trip, we didn't have a family anymore. Oh wait, Theodore feels like the family falling apart. I guess this is the plot now. Oh look, Toby recognizes their teacher from when they were in high school and is in love. Really? We're throwing this in too. Okay, okay, I will play your goddamn game, Malcolm. Yo. The doll girls are suddenly in love with you. <laughs> Why are they in love with me? You met in school. Oh, now I know everything. Oh, girl. What? You have to score the winning touchdown at a football game. Which one? Anyone. Chester, go! For Shinizu, I need you to hate each other while also preparing for a dance competition. What? True, it's going against what you originally were, but that doesn't matter when money's involved. Go! Baby, you! You are so pretty and smart! And you! You are the handsomest man in the world! <laughs> Why did that insult? I usually say in the universe. Malcolm, you need to be angry now. Get revenge on somebody. Who? I don't care, anybody. Neil Patrick Harris. <gasps> hey, we love Neil Patrick Harris. Critic, what should I do with this ball from the team, the 49ERS? Hey, 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 look at that. You need to settle your differences in a dance off. All right, river dance. Did you say a dance-off? No, we're onto something different. Oh, but we got a perfect dance instructor. No, 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 you need to now be injured and out of half of the movie. Um, I think we'd be better at that. You're in charge of finding a cat to almost never talk about. I had a cat once. It was ten years ago. That's way too much attention. More vague, more vague! I find your lack of vague disturbing. Somebody call 911! Okay, I think we're good. We have about five to ten cliché plots to confuse people into thinking we know what we're doing. Now, off to your bunches of stories. Oh, are you sure I can't be somebody's father? Beat it! With pleasure. Beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. No one wants to beat it, beat it. This had better be a big hit. It wouldn't be the first time I've obliterated these rodents. So the 
chip pets are teamed against the chipmunks in a school competition. You have the only other singing chipmunks in the world, ass face, and you're putting them in a school competition? What the fuck? And the school agrees there'll be a big competition to see which one they send to the... uh... competition. This creates friction with Alvin, who doesn't want to perform, but instead wants to play football. This looks like a job for a Dutch oven joke. Dutch oven! Not the Dutch oven! Oh, anything but the Dutch oven! Must find fresh air before it's too late! It's sad in a Chipmunks movie when I had to make the very real argument at least they didn't eat shit. Oh, Toby? This is my contractually obligated cameo! All good here, come home soon, bye! But that doesn't seem to help things as Alvin gets way too into his game. I'm gonna crack you like an acorn and eat you for dinner with some fava beans and a nice chianti. You're right, movie. More kids do need to see Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> he wins on air bud logic, but sadly that means he misses the competition. And now, let's hear it for a group that will rock you like a hurricane. She's gonna make the front page of the news someday, and not in a good way. The chipmunks! But they admit Alvin's not there, and they can't go on without him, resulting in the chipettes winning. I realize how devastated you chipmunk fans must be. I'll have to carve Alvin Y in the back of my skull until it makes it right! This causes Theodore to run away to the zoo, but gets cornered by a bird. Hey, birdie! Over here! Oh, careful! He might look down at you if you were actually there! Oh, not clearly! Oh, the suspense! Will he step forward as the trainer offers him a treat? <laughs> Guys, that was huge! Well, if by huge, I mean... not huge. It's a fish called Ian Hawk. But a talent agency was watching a random school video, as agencies do, and decided to give the Chipettes a chance of a lifetime. Guess who's opening up for Britney Spears at the Staples Center tonight? <laughs> She's at a crazy enough point where singing chipmunks can open for her. Who missed the school contest? It's never about that stupid school contest. A contest so stupid I knew an agency would be watching it! He wants to split the girls up, though, and when they refuse, he takes matters into his own hands. Okay, who likes barbecue? Barbecue. Because I know this awesome little barbecue restaurant in the valley that makes the best roasted chipmunk. Korean place? I don't know what's funnier. The fact that roasted chipmunk would be the happy ending, or the fact that this is still a better girl rock and roll story than Jem. If someone was barbecued in that, though, it would be a better movie. The school competition goes on, though, with their opening act that... honestly should win. I know talking chipmunks are amazing, but when you look past that, these guys really are better. But Alvin and the gang find out about the chipettes and try to save them. Except in the first film, when the chipmunks were in a cage and they skipped the lame, pointless climax, this time we get the lame, pointless climax! Oh, yep, fucking pee! <laughs> Yes! Those will be the most memorable words that we ever take away from the Donald. I suppose when you think about it, there's- How is he tweeting about me already? I'm not even done with the joke! They say they can make it back to the school competition in time with their good friend, Digger. I'm gonna get a little help from my friend, Digger! Roger that, Alvin! Look out! Whoa! Feels like I'm back at the racetrack! Don't make me do it. Please, God, don't make me do it. Who's Digger? Digger is a character from NASCAR when shown on the Fox Network. How dare you make me look up NASCAR, you monsters! Cross chases him down with a toy helicopter, because a toy NASCAR would have been too obvious, as they try to get the remote out of his hands. I'm going for it! Grab my ankle! story the whole time! How friggin' obvious! Here, I thought maybe, just maybe, it was about 
The concert? The football game? Going to school? Parenting? Working together? Egos? Toby's girlfriend? Jealousy? Fitting in? Family values? Or trusting your heart? But no! It was about Jeanette conquering her fear of heights, which has never been brought up in the entire movie until right now. So they get to the concert at the school and perform. I give you the chip ass and the chip -ass. But we haven't had any time to rehearse. Okay. It's clear that we have a winner. Uh, yeah, the judges haven't voted yet. Of the $25,000. Lot of money to give away just on the fly. And it's West Eastman High. You know, the uh, first act was technically a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the chip win. Creepy announcer, gladly give it to Creepy Principal. This seems very wrong. Meanwhile at the stadium, despite the movie pretty much promising us Britney Spears, she never shows up in the film and instead we get this. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, if you want to get married, you have a ring, put your rings on it. Again, is this really that much different from how we've seen Britney before? I'm kind of shocked the audience could tell the difference. She's a human! Okay, 2007. So that was the suck wool. It's all over the place, not funny, boring, unimaginative, and has no focus. It's stupid, it's dumb, it's dumb pit. And I just imitated it perfectly. Practically line for line, I got the formula down. That means I'm gonna be making millions in a matter of seconds. All I have to do is count all the moolah I'm gonna make from this point on. And the turnout is... Average? Uh, Critic, none of the Chipmunk movies were ever number one at the box office. Ever. What?! They did okay because they wrote on the success of other December movies. They've been the one family film clearly not trying to win any awards. But then why do so many people go and see it? High-pitched voices are cute! Duh! <laughs> Aww. So by that logic, I can make a million just by... Quick, pro quo, I tell you things, you tell me things. Yes and no, Clarice. Go ahead. You know, the movie was right. More kids do need to see this film. And now they will because you put it in the kids section on Netflix. The significance of the moth is change. Caterpillar into chrysalis or pupa. That'll be one of millions of angry parents. Your money's already mine, I don't care. I'm the nostalgia critic. I don't get it, I just exploit it. No, oh, it's like Hannibal ate Fred. I smell a squeakle. You use Evian skin cream, but not today. Hey, Doug Walker, doing the charity shout-out, and this week we are doing the American Red Cross. American Red Cross prevents human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. Through its strong network, they're always there in times of need. Aspiring to turn compassion into action, they work so that all people affected by disaster around the world receive care, shelter, and hope. They make sure their communities are ready and prepared for disasters so everyone in that country has access to safe, life-saving blood and blood products. They also make sure that all members of our armed forces and their families find support and comfort whenever it's needed. And that in emergencies, there's always trained individuals nearby, ready to use the Red Cross skills to save lives. If you check out their site or their YouTube channel, you can see where both your financial or blood donation goes. 
You've probably heard this name dozens of times and there's a good reason. It's a good, good organization that does such incredible work. They help anyone and everyone in need. So definitely take a look and see how you can help in their great cause.